our political leadership? It's a question that now needs to be asked. There has been no official briefing by any top minister or the prime minister over the last 72 hours. We heard today from top officers of the three armed forces uh, where evidence of India's pushback of the Pakistani Air Force was displayed. Apart from this briefing, where questions meant for politicians were lobbed at the officers, there has been scant communication. On the other hand, you have a former chief minister and top BJP leader claiming the Balakot strikes will win the party votes. To speak more on how our political leadership is behaving at this time, I'm joined now by Vinod Sharma, Nirja Chaudhary and Amitab Tiwari. Um, Mr. Sharma, let me begin uh, with the key question about how, how our political leaders have behaved uh, uh, in the last three days. And here, uh, of course, it is the ruling BJP and the opposition parties who uh, thought it was a fit time to start uh, you know, political attacks in the middle of what we're seeing. But the fact is that there has been no official briefing uh, from the prime minister or the home minister or the defense minister in the last um, three days. Uh, do you think that that lacuna is um, harmful at a time when there is so much false I mean, information floating around? Yes, of course, because you know today the briefing sought to dispel the disinformation that was coming from the Pakistani side. And this briefing by officers of the three services was very productive and very creative. And I think that if there is regular briefing, uh, you see the prospects of rumor mongering get diminished uh, greatly, at least from the other side. You see, war is not just about war with weapons uh, or war with words. It's also a psi war. And in the psi war, it is this dis dis disinformation which is used by your adversary. And I think that uh, we were not adequately prepared uh, to countenance this psi war from the Pakistani side. And uh, uh, I think that better late than never. Uh, in fact, ever since um, the 26th, 26th, when our fighters went and bombed Balakot, uh, there hasn't been any detail coming from official sources. Much of the information that has gotten published in newspapers is source-based information. Uh, and we don't have still any details of the kind of casualties and damage that we have inflicted, official version of what we have inflicted uh, at Balakot. Uh, but yesterday, uh, there was uh, this confirmation for the first time uh, coming from uh, the Foreign Secretary, uh, for, from the Foreign Sec uh, from the uh, Ministry of External Affairs, uh, that um, uh, we lost one MiG and the Pakistanis lost one F-16, and that our pilot was uh, held captive by the Pakistani side. Uh, so uh, this has been the story so far. But I think the biggest development today is the announcement, unilateral announcement, I think, is it uh, this kind of positive unilateralism is rarely seen between India and Pakistan. It had happened in 1999, and that was with some efforts by the Indian side that uh, another M and Nashiketa was released. Uh, but this time, this is, uh, you know, what I would say, positive unilateralism by Imran Khan yeah. and one hopes that this would lead to a degree of de-escalation uh, because escalation, conscious escalation at this point in time uh, would not sure. be that terrible I, I want to focus, I, I want to focus uh, you this know, is so, my assessment. Sure. So uh, I want to focus on, on, you know, the behavior of our political leadership because over the last few days, uh, we have made it a point to talk to, you know, former ambassadors, defense analysts who track this and see what they want uh, and, you know, what they think about what's happening, uh, which is why I've called the experts to look at how this is panning out politically. Um, Anirja Chaudhary, uh, I know everyone keeps saying that uh, uh, we shouldn't talk about politics at this time. But the fact is that our leaders are, uh, isn't it? Uh, uh, they are trying to milk the situation. Uh, and uh, it's not very becoming at this point. Uh, yeah, that, uh, you know, the situation will get politicized because elections are around the corner, but the elections have not been notified. And this uh, uh, situation of tension and uh, uh, us attacking uh, the terror camps in Balakot and them attacking art uh, coming across the LOC yesterday, this situation is still not, the dust has not settled. That We don't know, we're talking, people are talking about de-escalation, Donald Trump 
uh, indicated this today uh, when he said that they'd been talking to India and Pakistan and they were hopeful that the tensions would be over soon. That was the first sign of, you know, the de-escalation that came. Also yesterday, that there may be de-escalation. You remember that uh, there was an order that the uh, uh, airspace oh, northwards of Delhi would be given to the defense and there'd be no civilian aircrafts. And this order was withdrawn three hours later. That also was a possible indication that maybe things behind the scenes uh, were beginning to de-escalate. Uh, but, you know, still the situation is a live one. And uh, so in a situation like that, put, to try and get political mileage out of it in terms of, or electoral mileage out of it, or even uh, pitch it at that level, the rhetoric and the discourse, I think that both the sides can wait. Uh, yeah. Certainly the government, the prime minister, uh, the BJP, it doesn't matter if they wait for a week or 10 days. They can after, after that go to town, they will go to town and say that we did this and did this and they sent a message to Pakistan, we handled it very well and there will be a place for that. But at the moment to try and do it when the situation is uh, the way it is, I think they need to show more restraint. And I would have liked, you know, normally what the Prime Minister does do in a situation like that of national security is to call the opposition and quietly take them into confidence. Maybe not before Balakot, but certainly after it, that this is what, these are the moves we are making with the, the, with the other nations, with Pakistan. This is, a, you know, this is some to total of the situation coming from officially uh, from the Prime Minister. That would have been a desirable thing to do. That was not done, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, this kind of thing cannot be done with 25 parties. That, that's another level of uh, taking into confidence. But certainly I agree with uh, uh, my co-panelists that the, um, the representatives of the three services putting the record straight, things that are factually incorrect, coming from the propaganda machinery of Pakistan, as they said, uh, taking the country into confidence, this is not what happened, this is what we think happened. I think that is a very desirable thing, because otherwise there's a lot of speculation, as if somebody said, rumor mongering that goes on. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the more the information, credible information, the better it is. No, the, so the, the three uh, top uh, officers have come and they've done their duty, um, but there are political questions that the political leadership should answer. Amitabh Tiwari, that's the question I'm asking. Um, uh, the Prime Minister has spoken twice in the last two days, but both times at BJP events. Uh, today he uh, spoke at Vigyan Bhavan uh, while giving out awards. No reference was made to what has happened so far. Uh, shouldn't there have been an official briefing? Uh, the Home Minister was seen today at a manifesto uh, committee of the BJP. There has been no official briefing. The Defence Minister has not spoken yet. Meanwhile, you have Imran Khan speaking again and again and again. A flurry of videos coming in from Pakistan. Uh, isn't it important that these are combated and answered to with official comments? See, first of all, politicians will do politics. That is what they do day in and day out. So I'm not surprised at the politicization of this issue, both from the BJP as well as from the Congress side. Now coming to the question of regular briefings. I think there have been three briefings in the last three days. I don't know how many briefings we want. First. Secondly, somebody talked about the uh, Prime Minister calling an opposition meeting and discussing the pros and cons or telling them what has happened and, and what has not happened. The opposition meeting also has taken place. Maybe the Prime Minister has not chaired it, but the opposition meeting has also taken place. See, uh, we are very hypocrites in that sense. Uh, Total Dhamal and Gali Boy have crossed 100 crores. People are dancing, actresses and actresses are dancing in Bollywood, uh, uh, Ambani's wedding, but we want the Prime Minister not to hold a rally or not to hold a meeting which was earlier, earlier scheduled. See, the Prime Minister of Pakistan is coming and speaking three or four times does not mean that India's Prime Minister has to come out and speak. There were three regular briefings which were handled and it showed the weakness of, actually Pakistan was at fault and that is why it showed the weakness of Imran Khan that he was coming again and again because the situation was so fluid and as and when the situation was so fluid it was not correct for the prime minister to say anything in public meetings or in the government meetings where the, where where he attended of course in the BJP uh, 
meetings he did take credit for this air strikes but that was also because the opposition targeted modi for uh, uh, his failure to handle the national security issues when the uh, pulwama attack was uh, carried out yeah okay um, that's an interesting point um, uh, i want to see what vinod sharma has to say about it yes mr sharma we are with respect to uh, political baba my friend tiwari i mean giving a partisan speech at churu within hours of the uh, our air force striking malakot uh, is this the right approach to forging national unity and a unified response in the face of a challenge that we ourselves created i mean i am sorry i know gully boy is doing well i am also sitting here and chatting political baba is also chatting nirja is also chatting that doesn't make things normal because things aren't normal it's a fact that life goes on but then there are certain responsibilities constitutional authorities elected representatives have to have to have to carry out and i think that when parliament is not in session at least parliamentary party leaders of various political parties should be called and briefed and if that is not possible an emergent session of parliament can be called we are a parliamentary democracy we are not an executive presidency that somebody should behave like a president who's who 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 has all the powers to decide and then maybe veto certain decisions of parliament it doesn't work that way in india so no, if you I have mean... a system respect the system yes i i'm going to let me finish i don't i respect the government's right government has the information government is the has to take the final call and also the government has to take the opprobrium any opprobrium that arises out of it but at the same time we have to show the world that we are not moving in opposite directions that everybody is standing unitedly behind the prime minister of this country uh, the our prime minister is the prime minister of all indians he is not the just the prime minister of a political party now for the first time we are seeing the faces of our services chiefs uh, or services officers were coming and briefing till now the impression was that this war or this aggression is being led by a a party called the bjp and a person called the honorable prime minister we had a foreign secretary briefing we had a foreign, foreign office spokesman briefing uh, and we had uh, you know photographs of pictures moving pictures of shushma swaraj reading out from a written statement but if there was an all party meeting called which was addressed by the honorable home minister it was expected that the prime minister himself was there and he did the briefing himself if he had time to go and fulfill his prior engagements political engagements in churu and elsewhere and even today you know when the whole country is discussing about uh, the pilot and now hopefully he will be released tomorrow that you are addressing your booth workers you see politics is not about winning elections politics is also about winning hearts yeah and making india stand up as one in the face of a challenge that is where i feel a bit let down i'm sorry if i have uh, disagreed with someone but this is my take on no, it no i mean this is this is a debate so we want to hear everyone's views uh, th these are issues that all of us care about and i want neerja choudhry to come in uh, you know amitabh makes the point that everyone else's life is going on let's not pretend that elections are not around the corner the pm is also you know perhaps a bjp leader is there an equivalence though uh, between actors actresses people watching movies and the prime minister of the country look i would say that i think the prime minister has led from the front after pulwama which was i believe a tipping point and created a lot of anger in the country that enough is enough then this strike took place and the the uh, foreign office worked the telephones the world capitals and i think have done well on the diplomatic front considering the stand that strong stand that us has taken china even china going along with the unsc resolution uh, and then of course pakistan retaliated and our pilot is there but whatever the background diplomacy has taken place 
the pilot will hopefully be released tomorrow. That also is a welcome thing, welcome gesture uh, that uh, has happened. And uh, Imran Khan has made a gesture of wanting talks, uh, whatever be the talks, I think as far as India is concerned, we would like Pakistan to walk the talk as far as dealing with terror is concerned. The mood in the country has changed. The mood in the country is a very different one from the one even a year ago or two years ago. Now, in this context, I would say the Prime Minister has led from the front, but as Vinod was saying, I absolutely agree. In a moment like this, his stature would have risen even more had he called, not addressed an all-party meeting if he couldn't be there, but certainly called four or five of the leading opposition leaders and had really taken them into confidence about the moves that the government was move, making. And uh, I think also had they put off one or two of their poll meetings or mm. poll related meetings to say a week later, heavens wouldn't have fallen. And that those very things could have been said a week or 10 days later. So okay. I think that has been the place where things could have been better. Amitabh, your response, you, you've heard uh, the response, uh, responses uh, to your comments and just may I add, is it, is it the same thing? Don't we expect more from the ruling party, from the leadership, from top ministers in the government? Because look at the deluge of information from the other end since yesterday. Um, most Indians have been left to find out what's happening based on sources flashed on channels uh, with the... Uh, Seriously, questionable editorial standards. Uh, the only way to combat it is official information, isn't it? See, I mean, the other panelists are themselves agreeing that Modi handled this situation very well. Yeah. For the first time after 1971, we have crossed the borders, gone and stricken the uh, uh, terrorist camps. We've come back. Then Pakistan tried to do their misadventure. One aircraft from both sides were uh, damaged. Our pilot was uh, fell in their territory inadvertently. He was released within 24 hours or let's say one and a half days. So this is significant achievement. See, he going in public meetings does not mean that the government functioning has stopped. Many things, back channel things have been happening and he he, in, in fact, uh, chaired meetings for three hours yesterday as per news reports. One was in the afternoon and one, one, one was in the, e the evening to take stock of the situation. Now, the only issue which I guess here is that he has not come out and answered the questions of the journalists. I think no, that is... Uh, uh, Amitabh, Amitabh, I get your point. Okay, I get your point that uh, the, the Prime Minister need not come and tell people what's happening. <laughs> But then, should he be speaking? No, no. Should he be speaking about the issue at all? Then, from what is a political platform? Why make references in Churi? Why make references uh, to saying that we will all win together, vote to, You know, we are one country together at a BJP booth rally. Then make no reference at all. See, see references in Churu were made because on 21st of February, from the Congress handle, we had tweets saying that the number of attacks on our jawans or the number of youth joining the militant groups have increased under modi's rule so was it an opportune time to do that so of course he's a if if, if there is a, a opposition countering him and there has been a significant achievement which everybody is lauding across uh, uh, the platforms and he he took some credit for it because see any any military action has two aspects one is the establishment aspect which gives the green signal for the attack and one is the military aspect or the operational aspects in 1999 and 2008 then also the armed forces proposed that we should cross the borders and teach pakistan a lesson but the then establishment did not do it now, at least this establishment has taken a decision, has shown the world that we are a power and we have the political will to sort this issue uh, uh, forever. So some sort of and it's not as if he spoke for hours on that aspect only. He spoke. Yeah, One or two that, lines but that's in, not the point in, I'm making. I'm talking about the choice of platform. If you're saying I don't need to speak about it, I'll speak when things are clear, that's fine. But then to speak about it while a 
addressing a BJP rally. You know, Vinod Sharma, can you come in on this? Because there is a dichotomy there. Uh, the Prime Minister will always belong to a political party. This is, this is uh, we are in a parliamentary democracy. Close to elections, we may expect different behavior on different platforms, but it is one person at the end of the day. You know, it has been stated just now by uh, Mr. Tewadi that in 1998, you know, no action was taken, there was no hot pursuit. I may remind him, I may refresh his memory about India's, uh, you know, glorious record, uh, even as a country that was aggressed upon, that India has never bombed any city in <laughs> Pakistan. Never, ever. In 71, we did not bomb any city in Pakistan. In 65, we did not bomb any city in Pakistan. And yet we won these wars. We never air bombed any of the cities. And must he also know that this time too, the first briefing was that it was a non-military preemptive strike. There is something called a moral high which India has always enjoyed vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan. And that is where I say that that moral high, one contributory factor to that moral high was the political consensus we had in our country in 65, in 71. And in 71, if you remember, that so much was the unity that Indira Gandhi was openly praised by Mr. Vajpayee, who became prime minister later. No, I was waiting for an occasion in, an, in a situation of adversity where opposition leaders would come out and openly, openly, openly compliment the Prime Minister for the very strong decision that he took. Now that climate and that ambient for that kind of expression of unity and complementarity was not created at all. When within minutes, within hours of the terror strike, you go to Rajasthan and you cock a snook at the government in Rajasthan for not having done certain things and then addressing your booth workers today as if those booth workers were actually like bunkers that had to be put, in a, put on high alert for another war that is due another two months for a down the line. I don't think this is the right way of bringing the country together in challenging times. I mean, I beg to disagree. Uh, and I don't want to hurt anyone, but I feel that as an Indian, I wanted to see our political class yeah. shaking the hands of the Prime Minister and complimenting him for a very brave and a very bold decision. You know, uh, uh, Nija, I'll leave the last comment to you. We should be expecting more from our political class, isn't it? Uh, the opposition as well as the political leadership uh, and of course those running the government will always have a higher standard of answerability. Absolutely. I, I agree with you that we, we should expect and we should also ask for it and uh, insist on accountability also uh, to people of India uh, in a parliamentary democracy. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, in, to begin with, the opposition did say uh, that we, we are totally with the government on this. That was the, that was the position they took. And then when all these things started, then they started to feel that there was an attempt to take advantage, uh, electoral advantage uh, out of this, even before the whole thing is over. That's when then they met and had this statement of 21 parties saying, please don't politicize uh, and use the armed forces in such a way. And there's a counter by the BJP then that you are politicizing the situation. So as I was saying earlier, have Patience, it's only, of course, this is going to be politicized. We're into a very high stake election a yeah. uh, few weeks down the line. Uh, and the people of India are going to judge what they want and who they like. But you can wait for eight, ten days. Well, that's uh, good advice, and we'll end on that note. Thank you so much, Amitabh Tiwari, Vinod Sharma, and Anir Jai Chaudhary, of course, who ends by saying that have patience, wait for eight, ten days. Don't make this a political issue yet.